We're going to take a look at how we set the risk performance scores. The idea is this, that risk is basically a yes or no situation. It's binary, right? Either risk is occurring or it's not occurring. Now, that's a bit crude, so we want to add a little bit of detail. So at riskscorecard.net, we use a scale from 1 to 10. So 1 means a limited risk uh, going on, or the activity indicates not much risky activity is occurring. And 10, the opposite end, is a high level of risk-related activities occurring. Now, if we go back to the framework we've described before, you know, if we take a look at our current performance, there's a threshold called the risk appetite, which is slightly above and below that, which is the level at which that the organization is comfortable operating in, effectively the target range. There's a range above that, which is called the risk tolerance. If I go over the risk tolerance, I'm moving from what we can handle with our normal management processes to a level where we have to have special resources, teams, activities to help mitigate that risk. And then, of course, there's the overall risk universe, you know, the total galaxy of what could happen if everything good occurred or what could happen if everything bad occurred. And that risk universe kind of defines the upper and lower most parameters. So given that stuff, and there's other YouTubes on that that gives you that framework. If we take a look at our performance, say our target performance is we're planning to have 5,000 customers. And our risk appetite, you know, we're accepting risks that could result in us having a customer count as low as 4,700 or as high as 5,600. So if we're in that range, we're okay. But if we exceed that, if we end up with fewer than 3,500 customers or over 7,000, we have a crisis on our hands and we need to deal with it in special ways. So again, as a performance framework, we tend to describe performance within the target area is green. The risk appetite area is sort of yellow. You know, we can th survive, but we need to exhibit some caution. And then risk tolerance, that's what happens in that broader range where we now need to be paying special attention. So those are the red, yellow, and greens that you'd see in a typical scorecard. Now, again, on the risk side, we effectively don't really care whether our risk is at this level or all the way down over here. All we know is we've entered the risk tolerance level. So we don't need to get a precise percentage performance. The score is good enough. And so the way that riskscorecard.net is set up, we'll use a range from 1 to 3 for the green or target, a range of 4 to 7 for the moderate risk or you know caution, and then at the risk tolerance level, a score of 8, 9, or 10. And that's prorated against the performance targets that you set with your red, yellow, and green on the scorecard.